Russia's hacked into a lot of things. China's hacked into a lot of things. Russia even hacked into the Democratic National Committee. Maybe even some state election systems. So we've got to step up our game. Make sure we are well defended and able to take the fight to those who go after us. As president, I will make it clear that the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. We will be ready with serious political, economic and military responses. И люди не чувствуют опасности. Вот меня что беспокоит. Ну как вот как мы не можем понять? Мы мы тащим мир вообще в в совершенно новое измерение. Вот в чём проблема. Делают вид, что как будто ничего не происходит. Но я не знаю даже как достучаться. We're flying over Estonia now, but just over to the east, to the right, is Russia. We need to be ready. We should not be afraid. Ready for? Ready for opportunistic behavior of, of Putin's Russia. These US Marines are about to perform their first ever amphibious landing from the Black Sea onto the Ukrainian coastline. Fifteen amphibious assault vehicles packed with both US and Ukrainian Marines secured a beach south of the port city of Odessa before heading inland as part of the annual multinational naval exercise Sea Breeze. This year the US Navy deployed two ships, the USS Ross, a guided missile destroyer, and this ship, the USS Whitby Island, which acted as a launching pad for the amphibious operation. The Black Sea is bounded by six countries linking southeastern Europe and western Asia. Since the Russian annexation of Crimea in 2014, the security situation here has been very tense at times. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko has instructed all military units near Crimea and in the eastern Donbas region to be at their highest level of combat readiness. We need to be ready. We should not be afraid. Ready for? Ready for opportunistic behavior of, of Putin's Russia. surprised if some sort of video popped up from Google exposing them for trying to social engineer society would that be shocking to you considering all the things we've been doing the last year or two and would it shock you to find out that this internal video that was shared within Google was released in 2016 about the time that Google started doing social engineering and started trying to manipulate search results and try to make you a better person as they think is a better person right so this is what we have some google video internal video has been released accidentally to the public google selfish ledger is an unsettling vision of silicon valley social engineering internal video from 2016 shows a google concept for how total data collection could reshape society as if they want to tell you how to live your life. Google has built a multi-million dollar business out of knowing everything about its users. Now a video produced from Google uh, shows stunningly ambitious and unsettling look at how some of the company envisioned using that information in the future. We've seen this a lot from social media companies of recent. Facebook, YouTube, and Google, uh, and Twitter as well, trying to shape how you see things. They don't want you to say certain things. They don't want you to think certain ways. They want to make you a better person, right? Let's watch a little bit of this and you'll see what I'm getting at.
of a goal-oriented ledger may be user-driven. As an organization, Google would be responsible for offering suitable targets for a user's ledger. Whilst the notion of a global good is problematic, topics would likely focus on health or environmental impact to reflect Google's values as an organization. Once the user selects a volition for their ledger, every interaction may be compared to a series of parallel options. If one of these options allows the ledger to move closer to its goal, it will be offered up to the user. Over time, by selecting these options, the user's behavior may be modified and the ledger moves closer to its target. As this line of thinking accelerates and the notion of a goal-driven ledger becomes more palatable, suggestions may be converted not by the user, but by the ledger itself. In this case, the ledger is missing a key data source, which it requires in order to better understand this user. In order to plug the gap in its knowledge, the ledger begins searching for a device which delivers the required data when used. From this list, the ledger begins sorting the options most likely to appeal to the user in question. In situations where no suitable product is found, the ledger may investigate a bespoke solution. By analyzing historical data, it is increasingly possible to discern qualitative information such as text. But you know what? Honestly, we've already seen what their little social engineering experiment has done. They basically make it so that they push their agenda onto you. If you go to YouTube these days, within the last month or two, they've changed it to where if you search anything that has to do with a cultural topic, a political topic, it automatically puts to mainstream media news outlets and any approved channels at the top. So you actually can't find information very easily now. And for a little while, you could actually go to Google and search YouTube, site colon youtube.com, and then put in your search results. I mean, your search terms and actually find decent results. But now Google's also doing it. You can still do it over, I think, on Bing. You can do it on DuckDuckGo. But you can't do it on Google or YouTube anymore. If you want to look up something, you can't actually find non-biased information, like which is what caused Google to rise in the first place, was that they actually had decent search results. That's how they became big. Now they're actually nullifying their entire... Uh, history of how they became big. They're trying to tell you what to do now. This is what Google's doing. This is what they're trying to do. They're trying to modify you, make you a better person in their own image. Okay? So they want you to do what they want. This is the, I mean, this is what I'm, I'm starting to see. You know, it, it's really ridiculous, honestly. Why is it they think they have the right to tell us how to live our lives? Why do they think they have the right to manipulate us? Do we want to be manipulated or, or do we want to actually be able to make our own decisions? I don't want to be manipulated by anybody. And of course, I would hope you don't either. And we know how the, the general masses are. They like to be manipulated by things. But uh, I like to be independent. And I really don't like what I'm seeing. You know, honestly. And I, so th I thought this is a very interesting expose on the fact that they they were already planning this out and we can already see that they've been doing this that they've been trying to manipulate us in society and, it, and all these big companies are doing it now facebook google youtube twitter and they're even being hauled before congress and congress says, are you manipulating results no of course we're not manipulating results we're not doing anything wrong mr zuckerberg sitting there like a robot or some sort of lizard person you know what i mean <laughs> sitting there uh, without any emotions on his face, pretending as if he doesn't have any bias and that these leftist liberals are not trying to manipulate you into thinking certain ways or trying to silence you. No, of course not. That's, that's not what's going on here. And it's actually interesting. I saw also another report on the same day today about how... In Los Angeles, you got these the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. It's it, it's insane. Five hundred million dollar mansions next to neighbors who are homeless, homeless encampments next to a five hundred million dollar mansion. Does that does that sound a little bit weird? Because it's really the case. That's what's going on. Check this out. Uh, you have this nice house here, and then below it you have a homeless encampment. 
Uh, second Gilded Age, mansions get bigger and the homeless get closer. We see all these videos popping up on YouTube. California people f fleeing California because the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And, and the rich want to tell you how to live your lives. They're the ones that run Google and Facebook and Twitter. And they live in these places in California. And they want to tell you how to live your life while they live from their ivory tower mansions. You know, in their little bubble. They don't even know what happens in real life. And they want to tell you in the homeless encampment how to live your life. That you're a nobody. This is, this is the kind of people that are in charge of these companies. They're a joke. Okay, it's disgusting. The capital of America's second gilded age, Los Angeles, where homeless worth tens of millions, homes worth tens of millions of dollars, look over a city which the middle class struggles to afford shelter. And the number of homeless increases daily. Okay, well, they had that fire too. Uh, a brush fire in an ex exclusive area of Pacific Palisades brought to light that the homeless problem in Southern California is not exclusive to downtown Skid Row. And you got these, uh, you know, dilapidated houses, several homes destroyed by this skirball fire that raged through the exclusive Bel Air section of Los Angeles. It's just really weird, you know, what's going on with California. It's, it's turning into a liberal hellhole. You got the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. It's really disgusting, actually. And it, honestly, you know, it just makes you wonder where, where this is going to go. Where, where is this going to end up? With these big ivory tower companies telling us how to live our lives, thinking they know everything, you know what I mean? What you should eat, what you... Oh, you should feel sorry for yourself. You, should, you shouldn't be eating, uh, you know, you have to eat locally grown stuff you know you have to think about um you have to think about your health all the time i don't know i just i find this to be really ridiculous uh yeah actually i thought i thought about this as well black mirror there's a series on netflix called black mirror where it's just talking about sort of the dystopia of the future with all this high tech uh gadgets and everything and how it can just turn on us eventually we're going to be surfing the internet in our brains okay surfing the internet in your brains and there's going to be a point where there is not going to be any privacy whatsoever i was just watching a show on netflix about this where essentially everything every thought is recorded everything you do is recorded and can be easily tracked down by other people and the only people that are, have any privacy are these hackers that know how to cover their tracks and cover their thoughts so no one knows who they are. And it is really strange, this, this show I was watching, where nothing you think is actually private. Nothing you do is private. This is where we're going. This is where society is going. It's just a really scary thing to think of. Selecting Deva Harvesting products to buy that thinks so that you know the, google is already has a stranglehold on your data they have I, I was looking the other day i was looking at uh images on google and i can you imagine if google was around in the 80s how many lawsuits would have been against them for just look at how many pictures they, they take pictures of your pictures and they put them on google as if they own them they literally have bazillions of pictures of everybody's pictures, companies, everyone. They take their proprietary copyrighted material and they copy it and save it and keep it. They go around with these cars and take photos and video footage and images of everything as if they own it, as if they have the right to do it. The only neighborhoods that actually are able to avoid the stupid Google cars that, that make Google Maps are the ones that are rich. I, I used to do a ton of searches on, on addresses because of something I used to do in my business. The only areas that you can't see housing are very rich neighborhoods. All the other ones are easy to see. You can see virtually every neighborhood. The only ones that are uh, essentially impossible to see are very rich neighborhoods. They're the only ones that have apparently the legal power to put Google in its place while they're trying to eat up all the data and surveillance everyone. Of course, Bill Gates also is coming out now with 
his little brave new future, Bill Gates wants to basically map, uh, what is it, actually be able to surveillance everyone. Um, I was trying to figure out what that was called. I saw it the other day. Uh, let's see if I can find that. Bill Gates plans to surveil the entire planet from space. $1 billion plan here. So Bill Gates, he wants to surveillance you. Isn't that nice of him? Wow, what a nice guy. Bill Gates plans to surveil the entire planet from space. Earth now is a new company looking to provide satellite imagery and live video in virtually real time. Its unsettling pitch describes a network of satellites that can see any corner of the globe, provide live video with a latency of about a second, and look at the startup's top investor it gives a lot of confidence that this thing is happening. On Wednesday, Earth now announced that it will merge from the Intellectual Ventures ISF incubator to become a full-scale commercial business. Its pro first round of investors is comprised of a small group of complementary powerhouses, Airbus, SoftBank Group, Bill Gates, satellite industry vet Greg Weiler. So he has a lot of people behind him. Actually, a lot of governments are really interested in getting into this as well. So basically... Bill Gates is going to be surveillancing the Earth. Google is going to be surveillancing the Internet. And, of course, you know, mapping everything they see with their cars. It, there's going to be a point where there's going to be no privacy is what I'm getting at. It, there's going to be a point where once they start putting chips in their head to start surfing the Internet, you might think that's a funny concept right now, but actually that's probably going to happen very soon. 10, 20 years from now, you're going to have people with microchips in their head surfing, surfing the Internet, and that's going to be the new thing. Okay, They're going to be walking around while just doing normal stuff. They'll be able to get on the Internet while they're doing stuff. Okay, And at that point, of course, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to have a backdoor to your mind. They're going to be able to record everything in your mind. That's the brave new future we have in front of us, folks. Isn't that so nice? I think it's so awesome.